Welcome to the Esoteric Order of Gamers and today we're going to be going through a painting tutorial for the Call of the Wild figures. Oh my god, what was that? I'd better hurry. These are horrific looking figures are a joy to paint. As you can see there's lots of detail, beautiful stuff. What's going on there? I don't know, but that's the Dunwich Horror. It really looks like um, the Great Spaghetti Monster in fact. We'll be painting those monsters. We'll also be painting some of these investigators and these other assorted monsters. Now the first part of this series will be set up and preparation. And you can see I've got my very organized painting area here because we're particularly organized at the Esoteric Order of Gamers. We like everything to be just so. I have my painting rack here, Games Workshop paints. You can use whichever paints you prefer. I have them in a back to basics paint rack to keep them organized. I'm using Games and Gears Pro Studio brushes, which I bought on Kickstarter. As you can see, they're brand new, fresh, haven't been used, so that'll be a pleasure to use. For my painting service, surface, I have a couple of ceramic tiles, which I just bought from the hardware store. These are a nice gloss, hard wearing surface, very easy to clean, and I find them perfect for painting on. Here's my little bowl of water, some paper towel to dry and uh, clean my brushes on. And over here I've got a container of various tools that I use for preparing the miniatures. Before we start any painting we want to prepare the miniatures. Now remember these are just gaming pieces. Uh, they're not display pieces so we want to get this done pretty quickly so we can start playing the game with our painted miniatures. So it really doesn't matter if we don't put too much effort into this stage. And you can do this with a sharp knife and a needle file. Now in this case the plastic tends to tear a bit when I use the needle file so we'll just stick with the knife. Now be very careful with these knives of course they're really sharp and if you go chopping fingers off don't blame me. You see here there's um, bits of what are called flash which is leftover plastic sticking out where it shouldn't be sticking out and mold lines which show where the mold fits together and leaves a thin line of plastic. So just taking your knife carefully scrape off mold lines and bits of flash like this. Be very careful not to chop your fingers and not remove too much detail from the figure while you're doing it. There we go. Hold on, what are we doing? We're at the sink. What are we doing at the sink with miniatures? Well, strangely enough, it's a good idea to wash your figures before you undercoat them. This is because um, plastic figures um, are left with a bit of coating on them that makes the mould easy to come off. So you need to use a bit of water and detergent and give them a rough going over with a toothbrush. And this cleans any of that residue off and it makes it easier for the undercoat to stick to the figure. Use a bit of detergent and then get scrubbing. You don't have to be too precise, just gets the excess coating off. In fact sometimes I just leave them in the bowl to soak for a while. Be sure to get those teeth nice and clean. Okay I've given those a rough wash, now I've just got them on a tea towel and I'm going to let them dry for a while. And next we'll be preparing the figures for the undercoating. Right, now our figures are nice and dry, um, I'm basing them on foam court. Now you wouldn't normally do this for figures because you could hold the figure by the base. But uh, in this case I want the Mansions of Madness bases to be free of any texturing. So I'm going to paint them off their bases and I'm going to put them on this foam core. Now what I've done is... What? What? What is that sound? It is freaking me out! 
Anyway, we take the figure and um, it has a little nub where it fits into the base. So I'm just making a little hole into the foam core that I can fit the hole in. I take some white glue, put a little blob in the hole, and put the figure in the hole. And there we go. So these are ready for undercoating and they'll be easy to paint because I'll be holding the foam core and it'll be easy to get to all the parts of the figure. Some of them I'm not bothering so much. Something like this is uh, very difficult to put on any form of base to paint but it's such a huge thing I'm sure I can hold it by a leg as I'm painting it. But you can see here's the dark young figure on a base, easy to hold and here are some of the other figures and I can also paint a lot faster if I have it like this because for example if I'm doing the faces I can do a face, do a face like so and it makes the whole painting process a lot faster so on to undercoating okay now it's undercoating time I'm using Citadel Skull White and note that it's a nice balmy day. Now it's very important not to do your undercoating, undercoating on a day uh, where it's raining or wet or too cold or possibly even too hot. It's got to be just that right kind of day and the reason is, is that the spray paint can crystallize on the figures and form a powdery finish and you really really don't want that. So pick a nice balmy day like today. Make sure you give your Spray a really good shake and give the figures a nice even coat. Try and get it more ang all angles until you've got a nice even coat of white on your figures. And then finally we're ready for painting. What the? What? That sound? It may seem that we had to do quite a lot of preparation to get these figures ready for painting, but it's all quite necessary and will lead to a better figure in the long run. Now, a lot of people undercoat their figures in black, and I've never understood this. I've always undercoated mine in white, and the reason I do this is because it's so much easier to see all the detail on the figure when you undercoat in white. The other thing is, is that it's easier to put on color and get bright clear colors. If you're painting onto black you often have to do a number of coats of color to get a good color on the black surface. With white it's really easy. You can also do watered down washy applications of color to get instant shading. Um, and in the end you'll be shading these figures with a wash anyway, like these. Um, and that will go into the recesses and do all the sort of pseudo black lining effect that you'd get from painting on black anyway. So I really don't see the advantage of painting on black. I know it's very very popular but I've always painted on white and find it a lot better. So on these figures we'll be painting on white. Stay tuned for the next video in the series when we actually start painting these figures. Until then get undercoating, get preparing, Get mounting on foam core, get your figures ready, because soon we'll be playing Call of the Wild. I swear that's getting closer.